Hello everybody and welcome back to Off Topic. I am Ava and as always I am here with the lovely Chasby. Hello. Um, and today, this episode was sparked by a frustration I had doing my online English homework. Fair. Uh, basically we had to do like this like diagnostic on like our English abilities. Uh -huh. And I was having trouble with some of the... Oh, oh to basically to preface this, this episode is about linguistics if you... Um, can't yeah. read, I guess. You didn't read the title. <laughs> well, so linguistics, languages, uh, I um, guess writing, slang. Sort of slang that goes into it, yeah. Um, like accents versus dialects, too. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting thing. Yes, so it all started when I was doing my English homework, and I was having trouble with some of the words I was writing. I was writing a sentence, and it was, I can't remember the whole thing, but it was like, Abuelita climbs up the hill and blanks down and mm. blanked down to watch the sky. Right. And I said laid, like L-A-Y-E-D. Right, yeah. And it counted went it as... to lay down, yeah. Yeah, like past tense of lie. Right. Like L-I-E L -I, is it L -I -E or L-A-Y? Lay. I think... To lay? To lay is to... I know it depends. It's lie, oh. L-I-E L -I -E, to lie down, right? See, we're having uh, this problem right yeah, now. So this is the exact same problem. Lie versus lay. Um, uh, but basically, yeah, I put L A Y E D, laid. Okay, and it so lay, lay is to put or set something down. Lie commonly means to assume a horizontal position. Right. So usually so you use lie lay. for yourself and lay for something else, but okay. not always. Got it. So I put laid, and it counted as wrong. So I Googled it because I was like, oh, what else could it be? Oh, I guess it could have been lied. L A I E D? Right, yeah. And I but Googled it. But I think it. they usually just use lied down. I don't know. Yeah, but it was only... But it was only <laughs> English it is a say, weird language, too, I mean, say, to begin with. It didn't with, say so. blanked down. It said blanked on the hillside to watch the sky. Right. So right. laid. So I said laid on the hillside. Right. And it said it was wrong. And I was like, how is that wrong? So I Googled it. And mm -hmm. it was like, laid is a archaic term that no one uses. And I was like, but that's, first off, that's but, offensive to me. <laughs> I'm curious if that actually means that it's incorrect, though, or whether it just is a preference thing as far as writing goes. Yeah, like, apparently I write like a freaking Shakespearean <laughs> age person. Ancient English Ancient. of old. I, I don't even like consider myself to have that like archaic of a vocabulary. I just thought laid was the correct term. And apparently also I have also a few amongst... archaic words in my vocabulary that I like to use just because they're fun words and they have applicable meanings nowadays. Yes. But... Apparently there was another question later in the diagnostic that was asking about the difference between like between and among. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get that because I didn't think... Because we never like learned because it was a whole... U apparently it was supposed to be like a whole unit among versus between. Okay, interesting. But we never talked about it, so I didn't have the context to be like, oh, this is asking for either between or amongst. So I was like, oh, I'm just supposed to put a word that makes sense there. Right, So right. I put it amongst, and it was wrong. And I was like... Interesting. How is amongst a wrong word? Right, it right. Was, it was, like, used in the correct context. Yeah, yeah. But then I just started Googling it, and I figured out it was looking for either among or between. So apparently oh. I used very many old old English words. Interesting. That, no. Yeah, I'm, I know that I use a few. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but there are a few that I'll, like, randomly use. Betwixt, I use that. Betwixt, I do use... I've used betwixt before. It's not one I use in, like, general conversation, but I've used it before. But there are a few that I, like, use in general conversation. I mean, I have found um, that, like, my, um... My writing sounds older now. Like, I sound like I'm right. Writing, it, like, yeah. it sounds more mature. Yeah. Which yeah. I don't think is a problem, but, mm -hmm. like, Not I'll be all. doing, like, warm-ups in English <laughs> class, and I'll sound like I'm writing a formal essay. Because, right. like, I have Grammarly trademark, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it'll, like, it gives you, like, the mood of what you're typing. And I was literally just typing about a song I listened to over right. the summer, and it was, like, formal. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, okay. <laughs> let me see. I, I, let me see if I can pull it up. Um, it was your summer jam quick write that my English teacher assigned to us. I can't spell. <laughs> I can write, but I can't spell. <laughs> um, yeah, here's mine. It's like, hmm. Ah, uh, I was fascinated with the message of the song. I do, I use fascinated a lot. I use namesake. And apparently I don't know if people that's think that fascinated is formal, which I don't. Um. Apparently, like, despises because also because i see triumphant despises, triumphant i might 
Yeah, I mean, I could see why it would be. Apparently, it has more than like three syllables. I, People <laughs> just are like, mm, big brain, <laughs> big brain word. Yeah, I was going to say, I use those words really regularly, though. Yeah, so, do so I, I guess I have a formal writing style as well. I did cool. use the word bop, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I was using it as in like the verb to bop, yeah. to bop your head. Mm-hmm. Is that like an actual word or is that a so. slang term? I think it's both. Like I think people use it as a real bop term. Bop is like but... as an adjective it's a slang, but yeah. isn't bop like an actual verb? Like to bop, know. to bop your bop, head. I think it is, yeah. You could look it up real quick. Look it up. Uh is bop a slang word? <laughs> is bop a slang term? Could just look up the definition of bop. Oh yeah. And see if that works. Uh quit bopping. <laughs> bop <laughs> definition. Short for bebop. bebop. <laughs> Cowboy bebop. Dance to pop music. Yeah, so yeah. it's bop. It's a real it's a word. Dance to pop music, yeah. And noun, what is bebop? A type of jazz originating in the 1940s by, can characterize by complex harmonies and rhythms. In slang, though, it just means a good song. Yeah. Yep, here it is. In Urban Dictionary, it says, used to reference to a good song, to say that a song is very good. Speaking of slang, I use a lot of slang. But I it's also, true, you do. But, but also, there's a lot of slang that I don't understand. Like, right, yeah, yeah. I, sometimes I'll come across slang. Like, I feel like when I get to, like, learning new slang words, I learn it way too late. And then, I, and then it just gets lodged into my vocabulary yeah. and I'll use it forever. Yeah, I think the, like, it's the blank for me slang thing is kind of interesting. I it's never like, got, sorry, you can hear my dogs running downstairs. Supposedly it's supposed to mean, like, or at least from everything I've gathered. Like an insult. It's yeah. supposed to be, like, an insult to somebody else or yourself, but, like, a sarcastic one. Yeah, it's but the like poofy a lot hair of, for me. Or yeah, the... but, like, a lot of people use it, like, a lot of people don't use it like that way. Like, they use it to actually give, like, a compliment. Like, yeah, instead I mean, they're like, it's the blank for me is, like, a reason I like you, not a reason I dislike you. Yeah, Which is I really like weird to a me lot because of people kind of use like... it very sarcastically and, like, reverse meaning, and it's like... Yeah, I feel like TikTok's kind of like ruined slang <laughs> because people <laughs> use it bit. out of context and they'll use it like too much to the point where it loses its original meaning. Yeah, yeah. Like it's the blank for me used to be funny, but now it's in every comic section. Right. Or yeah. comic section, excuse me. And yeah, yeah. um I mean fresh. Like they use the word fresh so many times in the comics that I don't want to use it anymore. Right, yeah. That's fair. Yeah, speaking of like dialects, if we want to like talk about dialects real quick, mm-hmm. um I have, like, very poor, like, speaking habits because I speak fast and, like, my language is kind of like a jumble because that okay, was one yeah, of, like, yeah. the downsides of, like, list watching. Sorry, you can hear my dog <laughs> squeaking in the background. I apologize. <laughs> he has this this tennis ball that has a squeaker in it and any time he can, like, I feel like he has, like, a spider sense of, if like, anything. when something important is <laughs> happening, he will start squeaking the ball. Like, all day he hasn't been squeaking that ball, but as soon as I sat down to watch TV, he was like, Squeak time! <laughs> it is time. <laughs> I mean, if anything, it'll be, I'm sure it'll be an interesting background noise that'll offer some amusement. Yes, if you hear squeaking, it's it's Jackson. He's yeah. having a ball, literally. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I, I was kind of like a downside of watching, so because I didn't even realize that I had picked up so much, like, like dialects from right. the people I watched on YouTube as a child. Yeah, yeah. Like, I used to, like, I literally got, like, absolutely berated by my family for doing it mm-hmm. but i didn't even realize i was doing because i would uh, say literally instead of oh, literally yeah, yeah yeah, because i was watching so many british youtubers <laughs> and i was just like literally right 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 right. it was it wasn't on purpose i yeah, was like it, oh i want to be it. british yeah, yeah. your it brain just, just absorbs that sort of thing it was also because i was a kid so i was impressionable right. so i was like mm-hmm. picking up words for them mm-hmm. um this also goes on the very unfortunate side because I would learn words that I didn't know the meaning of, right. like curse words. Mm. <laughs> so I, yeah. I didn't know the meaning of the word pussy, and then I called oh. my horse that in front of my <laughs> sister. <laughs> Thankfully, my mom wasn't there, but I did that because I was watching so many PewDiePie videos. Oh god! And back of in course. the day, yeah, yeah, had, like, PewDiePie was not PC. Mouth. He was not politically correct at all. But no. YouTube algorithm—that's one of the positive things it's done is, is it's made PewDiePie clean up his act a little bit. Yes, just a little. So, Bit, I learned bit. all of my because I was so vulgar in elementary school. I learned because I learned what the words meant quickly. Because right. after that incident, I was like, oh, maybe I should Google words before I say right. them. Maybe I should know what I'm saying. Yes, but thanks to doing that, I learned that like the R word is not a good word to use. Yeah, because yeah. people would say it a lot. I guess like my sister would say it sometimes. And yeah. I, I just assumed it was like a synonym for stupid. 
But right. then I no, googled it and I was like, have, oh, yeah, this is like has a specific this is a slur to like disabled people. Oh, I was yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. want to say that. Yeah, yeah. So thankfully, I don't really. I don't. I think like. No, I don't think I've really said it on purpose. Mm. I've never like said I've it probably on used it like quoting somebody, yeah. but I don't think I've used it like as a synonym for stupid, or especially not. I've never used it as a slur. Like I've never, never like, consciously, like yeah. I've never consciously done it. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been like, "This is the word I'm gonna pick." And even yeah. if I did ever say it, I would never ever say it as like an actual slur or like to somebody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like it could be like somewhat justifiable to mm-hmm. like. I mean, actually, I had this discussion with. Um, I think I was talking to you about it, but technically, since I'm ADHD, I can say it. I mean, I guess. And I was like, yeah. I feel like I can't though. I mean, yeah, I mean... I feel like it's not my, my slur that's to fair. use. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think know. I think it depends. <laughs> yeah, I feel like... I I'm, do think part of it depends on how you view view yourself, though. Yeah, because I don't... It doesn't affect my life a lot. Yeah. Uh, I've never been called it, so I feel like yeah. I, I don't need to reclaim a word that I've never really been yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, which is perfectly fair. Yeah. But we yeah, don't want to I mean, go too much into yeah, slurs yeah, but it's like because the interesting they're thing, a problem. <laughs> yeah, and there's also the thing about, like, dialect versus accent. Yeah, like because like my uh my um my grandfather like he actually had that discussion because like my grandmother has a little bit of uh, I should write down when I said the when I said uh, pussy <laughs> uh, probably yeah yeah that when was, was uh, that was that like I would put five minutes maybe but I don't know when it was five minute five zero in recording and just pussy. watch it through <laughs> yeah and um, also eleven minutes because I just said it again. <laughs> Uh, Perfect. Ava making more work for herself. Yeah, I'm literally just making like an hour's work for myself. It's right, not Chazby, right. it's me. <laughs> but because uh, like my grandmother, she has a little bit of a southern accent, but it's like a right. West Virginia southern because she grew up in like a small town in West Virginia. So it makes sense that she has it. And she like says wash. Wash. And water with an R. Water. And like it's dropped a little bit because she had because like she lives in Virginia and people yeah. in Virginia don't have that same accent, but like she still has the dialect and right, a little right, bit right. of the accent, but my grandfather was like, "Oh, well when I went up north, they were like, you sound different. You're not from around here." And he, and I and he was like, "I think that was because of my accent." And I and I was like, "I honestly think that's because of your dialect more than your accent." Right. It's because you have a very southern like dialect like you say library yeah which is a very southern dialect or like sunday thing. yeah like that's and sunday that's uh, that's a dialect not an accent thing yeah i remember can, my econo- i can still say library with a british accent library. that's an accent versus a dialect so like yeah it um that was a terrible British accent. Yeah, but, uh, my personal finance. Sorry, that's kind of. Yo, know, like when actors yeah. you do like br- try to do accents and yeah. then they lose it unless, halfway through the movie. Unless they actually, yeah, unless they actually Scarlet do. Scarlet Witch from Marvel. <laughs> she had yeah. like a Russian accent, Age of Ultron, and then yeah, completely she was supposed lost to have Sokovian it. accent, and then completely, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, like my um, personal finance teacher. Yeah. Um, that I took, I took personal finance online over the summer, yeah. and he every time I would get like a little bit of a kick out of it because mm-hmm. he would open the class and be like, because uh, he had a very thick southern accent. Right. He was like, "All right, y'all, welcome to personal finance." <laughs> he was like, "Finance." Interesting. <laughs> Instead Interesting. of finance. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "How? And then- <laughs> how? Ha- it's so weird how languages have just like evolved right. to like that- some people say finance and some yeah. people say finance." Yeah, yeah, and it's also interesting because I pointed out that like. Most kids our generation in America, we don't have, like, an accent. We have yeah. an American accent, but we don't have regional accents. I think There's it's some just, places yeah. where we still do, like... I in, think it's because of entertainment. Because personally, yeah, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah, because entertainment has gotten so big, and in, 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 in entertainment... YouTube. Yeah, in entertainment, very few, like, actors, or even in YouTube, m- very few of them have solid accents. They have that, like, They're general... They're usually doing it in person. Yeah, uh, so, in like... Per, uh, pers- intentionally oh my god yeah, i completely so forgot like, the word intentionally yeah and like <laughs> on tv a lot of times like same thing with britain yeah is britain like on its tv shows like it has like the standard british accent but there are very few tv shows that have like thick welsh or like or thick welsh or like even like there are even tv shows that will like take place in london but won't have some of the serious posh more accent. like serious or not even posh london accents but like there are several different 
accents in London, or e- yeah, or even more so like dialects. There's several heard, different like, thick dialects. Welsh accents. Yeah, they're really weird. That's <laughs> they're wild. They're really cool. They're awesome. I love. I think Welsh, Welsh is such a cool language. Yeah, because I mean, they use like said, the. The only reason I say it's weird is just because it's like it's so noise. different from any other English speaking accent I've heard. Yeah. Like I'm sure, as, of course, to Welsh people, like it's completely normal, and I think like there's nothing wrong with it. It's just it sounds so different that like it it's, tricks my ears for a minute yeah i think it's, it's really weird how like interesting. uh americans have like romanticized accents like especially yeah, like british thing. australian yeah, that's and a scottish weird thing that i don't really understand yeah i doubt there are like british people like oh american accents are sexy no i know that there is <laughs> like so, though, apparently there's some though. like running stereotype though that like um that like brits have crushes on americans because americans are like the movie perfect people and like they assume that like everybody in America looks like American movies. Yeah, like a L- blonde looks, bimbo. Y- yeah, not even, but like, which I think is we interesting. don't. That yeah. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> it's like we don't. Especially because like, that's why I think it's weird. Like in every like American movie, it's all like white people, but like white people are barely the majority in America. Oh you yeah, think especially about right it. now. Yeah, minorities are more than half of America. Yeah, like the middle school that we went to, like right now, is minority majority. Yeah, which means it that wasn't even when we started there. Though. It wasn't when we started there, but like same thing with Deep Run. Is right now it isn't. Gotta, gotta believe that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all right. <sighs> I don't worry. <laughs> I, this is the second. She, this is the second time you've ever Ava created curse, new work. <laughs> Ava, Ava curses, and then I just drop names of actual locations that you can find <laughs> on Google Maps. Either way, my job <laughs> Either is way, hard. It's rough. <laughs> But yeah, so like, this is only the second time you've done it, though. Yeah, it's true. But like, even at the school we're going to now, like right now, it isn't. But by the time we're upperclassmen, it will be. Yeah, because the um, love come to yeah. us. Which is cool to me. Like I think that's really neat. Yeah. Because even and if you don't know, minority majority schools or locations are basically areas where, technically in America, the technically the majority is white, but. Um, in minority majority schools, that basically means that most of the population isn't white. There are some other yeah. minority, uh, I which think I think is really neat. That. Like, yeah, minority I, majority because yeah. it's minority weird. Majority is weird. like making them seem like others. Yeah, like, and it also the and I mean lower and number. I mean now it's not really accurate. Yeah, we're um, almost the minor. I mean English yeah. isn't going to be the most spoken widely spoken language. It'll be Spanish soon, isn't it? Uh, so I think my Spanish teacher was discussing that. It depends. Last year. Spanish could be one of them. In America, Spanish could definitely be one of them. Yeah. Um, I could definitely see like Mandarin uh, becoming no, 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 much yeah, more yeah. widely so, spoken. Yeah, I was about to say. So uh, uh, there are several different Chinese languages, and there are several official Chinese languages. They have but so many dialects. It could oh my be God. Mandarin. It could be Cantonese. It could be just simplified or traditional Chinese. Yeah. But all of those languages. Um, well, probably because of, like, China's kind of becoming a powerhouse globally. Seriously, I mean, yeah. they own almost all of our country's dead. Yeah, we're kind of screwed. Yeah. China's like, um, no, we don't like America anymore. Yeah, and they just decide to they go, hey, you know those uh, all of your stuff? <laughs> of quadrillions of dollars you owe us? Yeah, I don't get We it, want like, that back now. Yeah, not to get, not um, to get like, too political, but yeah. I don't like how Republicans are like, we hate immigrants and china and it's like do you realize if they leave they take all their stuff and you have nothing yeah like almost nothing in america is made Salt, by americans pepper we and beef everything. and grease that yeah. is the culinarily I, that honestly, is the only thing we will have if you don't like other races like if you've picked a race to be racist against or all of them yeah i dare you not to eat their things like you want to be you want to be racist or like xenophobic to like mexican immigrants don't eat their food yeah Stay, keep your booty as far away from, like, quesadillas. <laughs> and even that, that's just an American Mexican food. Yeah, but, like, like burritos, keep your, tacos are Keep away from it. Even, yeah. And, like, um, if you want if you want to call China, like, if you want to yeah. blame China for the coronavirus, don't you dare, like, <laughs> eat Chinese food. Yeah. Stay away from rice. If, like, <laughs> no eating rice. Right. What are you going to do? Eat potatoes? No, those came from <laughs> Ireland. You hate right. Europeans. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I do think it's... An, I'm, I've never had... Like, I, I do understand the, the, the pressure for space. Yeah. But I have no issue, like, with immigration. We like, are immigrants. Like, yeah, I mean, even we you, were immigrants. You are yeah. descendants of immigrants. The yeah, only yeah, people yeah. who are here and that are actually, actually We're the Native American. Americans. Yeah. Those are the only people who have actual... Technically, they only have actual claim. Yeah. Because literally, Britain was just like, I have a flag and guns. <laughs> we are here. <laughs> we are here. I mean, I we were I was discussing this in my world history class, but apparently, mm. like, 
this uh, Chinese adventurer got here before Columbus did. Supposedly. Supposedly. And also supposedly the Vikings found uh, areas of Canada. I wouldn't. I wouldn't in, be surprised. The Vikings just were. The, Vi- like, the Vikings literally went lads. everywhere and just yeah. pillaged <laughs> they until were like, they couldn't pillage no more. <laughs> yeah, until they got pillaged. <laughs> until they got pillaged. <laughs> and they were like. Oh. <laughs> this doesn't feel good. Yeah. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> yeah. So there are lots of theories that say that uh, Vikings find found like Iceland, and which they did. It wasn't uh, Christopher Columbus. It, I don't trust that man. I definitely don't think Christopher Columbus was the Christopher Columbus. <laughs> Christopher Columbus. <laughs> Christopher Columbus was the first one. I don't think he was the first one to find it. Yeah, I mean, um, I can like. If I, like, took out the fact that the people say that people don't like immigrants because they're racist and they're just trying to make up excuses, if you take yeah. that out and you just, like, take their arguments of point blank, I mean, I can see it. I don't agree with it. Mm. I can see yeah, it. I mean, but as I said, you I know do... that they're doing it just because they don't like immigrants and they've yeah, been, like, like basically as I said, brainwashed I can see why not people, to like them. I can see why people worry about space, but I feel like if immigrants are coming into this country... Um, because, like, because it will offer better opportunities, yeah. we as a country should... Use that to flourish. Yeah, because, because we, should we be are like, built off of yeah, like because it's immigrants. Like, I think if it's like people, if people, if the reason that immigrants come is to make better lives than they had in their home country, yeah, then I think we should respect that and be like, wow, this is really or the awesome land of the free. If they want yeah, to be free, they're get, considering get over here. The, yeah, they're considering the possibilities of life in the United States is better than their own. So they're why trying shouldn't to, we let them in? So they're trying to emigrate. I see no reason not to do that. Yeah, and like, I, I see think, no like, most people who, like, are against immigration immigration, imm- um, immigration policies are like, well, if they came they came here legally, and then, but you have to, like, accept the fact that it's almost impossible. And some of them to, have to come here illegally. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like, it, it is different. My like, grandma is yeah. a French, is, like, a French-Canadian immigrant. Yeah. She still doesn't have a green card. Mm, yeah. Because she can't. Right. It's so hard. It's expensive. Yeah. Most Americans can't pass the immigration test, and yet they oh, yeah, and they yeah. expect people not from here yeah. to pass it. I watched. I've seen videos of like YouTubers like taking the immigration test. And we should take failing. it at some point. I think I could probably pass it. I don't think I could. Spoken, I may not, but I think I could probably pass we'll, it. We'll take it after <laughs> we record this, and I'll I'll like edit in an answer whether we passed or not. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'll leave like a blank in the audio for me to be like, we passed, or yeah. Chaz, we passed, Ava didn't. <laughs> yeah, but I think I could pass it. Now, I granted, don't think I could. I don't know if much I about US didn't, history. I wouldn't be super surprised either. But it's supposed to be really hard. Yeah. Well, some of it, uh, part of it though. Um, I mean, you only have to get like apparently, according to a lot of videos I've seen, like you only have to get like a sixty on it. That's still, but you, still, it's but like you also, have, you also have an interview portion though, and right. that's the part that a lot of people struggle with is because i think they require it in english i yeah. might not be right yeah but i, think I mean, they require it in english if you can't um, speak english and you have to be able to speak it well enough to have an interview and a conversation yeah um, i don't get i don't get that concept like, like the people who like will that, like, like attack people in like grocery stores and be like you're in america speak english and it's like almost more than half of america doesn't speak english as yeah. their first language and plus you go somewhere else and you can't speak the language they're so helpful yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and like you try to speak like Sorry, my dog's barking. But I like, mean, granted, most like with the way society has been set up, like globally, English you can find relatively okay English speakers in most areas. Yeah. But like, in most countries, but at the same time, I do think it's really cool to be like in. I think it's really important that like everybody in their life at some point learns a different language. Not necessarily learns a different language. Like you may not, you may not be a language buff. Yeah. But I think it is important that everybody steps out of their comfort zone a little bit and travels to a country. Where Other their room. language is not the national language. Yeah, because that's how you get really language. like tunnel because, minded like, people yeah, who yeah, like can like, only like I went, see the pros uh, of their Yeah, country. I took a vacation with my it's dad. Get fascist, pretty yeah, much. <laughs> <laughs> it was just me and my dad, and we went to Peru. Yeah. For a month before I started school. Like, literally, I started school when I was five, and the summer before that school year, like, we spent literally, I think, all of July there. So right. it was winter there because you know how seasons work flipped on the other the other hemisphere Mm -hmm. but uh it was winter there and it was cold but it was like it was still it was really cool and like i picked up spanish really quick and like a lot of people assumed young people and a lot and a lot of people i mean granted like my expectations weren't very high because i was five so it's not like they expected me to be like god to your yeah they didn't expect me to be like have the linguistic skills of like teenagers or even adults 
mm-hmm. but still like apparently people assumed that since it was just me and my dad on that vacation they assumed that my mother was from a native spanish-speaking country oh and that you were just an immigrant and then i was either an immigrant or was on vacation to visit hometown a hometown or something yeah, which I, isn't true. I cannot stand <laughs> Both double Both of my parents standard. are white American. <laughs> yes, I cannot stand the double standard of, like, some, like, rich person. Yeah. Like, has a child and they know two languages. Like, they yeah. know, like, English and French. Mm-hmm. Like, they're fluent in two languages. And everyone's like, oh my god, they're so smart. But when an immigrant family knows, like, three languages out of necessity, they're like... Yeah, that's weird to me, mm-hmm. too. Yeah, it's but, like, um, why but do yeah, you not so it's think like, it's do you not think they're intelligent people because they're poor? Yeah, I don't know. Like it, I don't get that really double weird. standard. I do think that a lot. Yeah, it's it's really strange. But like, like why is it seen um, as genius yeah. when? But uh, I think because Jimmy. of that, though, like I think I've been really like I've taken span on to Spanish really quickly. Yeah. Even though I I could have started it in, in middle school, but I didn't because I was doing like band and theater. Yep. But like I've caught on to it really quickly in high school, and I think part of that is because I spent like literally a month where. Like, yes, I spoke English to my dad, but it was like I had to be able to pick up basic conversations. Yeah, just and to like, figure out what's I had going on. Be, yeah, just so I could figure out what was going on. And I, like, got – apparently I got good enough that I could legitimately um, have, like, basic conversations with people. Yeah, I mean – And know what they in, were saying and the, know how I was responding. Um <laughs> Since, like, my sister rides horses, mm-hmm. a lot of the grooms are, yeah. like, the people who, like, help get the riders ready to, like, mm-hmm. go show. Yeah. They're – all almost all of them are mm-hmm. from Mexico. Interesting. They okay. all speak yeah. fluent Spanish. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they don't even speak English. Right. So I've just been – every time I go to a horse show, surrounded by Spanish. So right. when I, like, put my mind to it and I was, like, more passionate about it – because the first year I took Spanish, I didn't care. I just wanted my credit. Right. But then I got more passionate into it in, like, right, eighth yeah, grade. Yeah. And I picked it up so quick. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. Like, really, really fast. I've always been, like... And also, it's kind of similar to English, since we take a lot from romance languages. Right, right, right. And I do think it's interesting, because, like, um... I forgot to set our timer. Oopsies. It's okay. But I do think part of it is the fact that, like, we've, um... It's like, I've always been sort of exposed to languages. Like, different languages. Because, as I said, I went on vacation to Colombia and Peru for a month so I was exposed to a whole bunch of Spanish and I do martial arts and of course mar- like they aren't speaking like in Taekwondo they aren't speaking Korean yeah and in Kendo they aren't speaking Japanese but there are vocabulary words that we have to know that are Korean and are Japanese yeah and I had to learn French um, for ballet yeah like I mean I don't know any like proper words like I couldn't right, speak right, as right. uh hold on sorry the mic is being weird um I can't speak like a sentence in French but right. like my grandpa speaks in French yeah, yeah, he's French Canadian like, mm-hmm. French is his first language mm-hmm. Which is, it causes some really weird issues. Like, in right. French, it's, like, pretty common to, like, refer to somebody by, like, their gender. Right. But it, it sounds really rude in English. Like, right. he'll, like, call people, like, woman and man. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So he'll yeah. be like, woman, help me. Right, And right. it sounds like he's being, like, sexist. Right. But really, but that's just reality, how his just, language yeah, yeah. is translated. And that I do think is interesting is that English is one of uh, only a few, like, global languages that doesn't, doesn't have, like, have pronouns, pronouns to, words. to objects. Yeah. Um, which is, I honestly better for think, those kind of cool. non binary folk. Yeah. Um, but, how um, are you non, how can you be non binary in, like, Spain? I'm not sure. I'm just curious how it would work we could out. Probably, we could probably, because I know look they have, like, out. they've, like, created, like, mix, mix as a pronoun, but, yeah. like, it's not widespread. So, right. yeah, yeah. So, how a lot do of you, like, have conversations? Understand. I'm honestly not sure. That would be something interesting to look up. Because they, them, it doesn't up. really exist yeah, yeah, yeah. in Spanish. I do think that, but yeah, that is an interesting prospect as well. But as I said, like, I I think that, like, intrinsically, like, other languages have never been, like, much of a, an issue for me. Yeah. Like, not not that I'm, like, I, as I said, I don't know Korean, I don't know Japanese, but at the same time, I know vocabulary words that we use in, like, kendo. Yeah. That are, like, a lot of people, especially a lot of Americans, where English is their first language, they assume that these words English is are, actually very hard. Yeah, and uh, in a lot of, like, Americans who, like, a lot of white Americans who do kendo uh, assume that, like, these vocab words that we're learning are specific to kendo. Mm-hmm. But no, we're literally just learning Japanese words. Yeah. Like, men, we shout that when we strike the head. That literally just means head. So we're literally Why? just sh- shouting head in Japanese. I'm not sure what... I'm not sure what the origin of that is. I know that part of it is, like... Because part of, um... Part of kendo is this thing called zanshin, which is where you have to basically assert energy. 
mm-hmm. to show that like once you've struck that you're that you're basically that's basically zanshin is basically how you go i got that point i just took it that's mine mm-hmm. and so part of doing that is like the whole like yelling which is kiai which is basically like energy expansion which part of it is shouting and then you not very people a lot of once you get higher up lots of it starts to blend together yeah like kulte is wrist i believe do literally translates to ribs but this the shot is the stomach but um like all of like when you're when you're doing basics you'll be like men kulte do but then eventually like when you just it all sort of blends together Right. And you just expel so much energy. It's just like, nah. Ah. Yeah, well, you have to do it like that. And I know it sounds weird, but like, if you were to watch it and you realize like what we were doing, it would, I think it would start to make a lot more sense. Because it's yeah. like, because said, that's part of kendo is you have to, basically, in order for a judge to go, okay, yeah, that point's worth giving. You have to show that you didn't just hit it and go, like it uh, wasn't like just, it yeah, was an like, accident. like it wasn't just an accident or a Hail Mary. You have to show that no, that was an intentional, purposeful strike strike that took precision accuracy and intention yeah i mean I and so like... part of it is the shouting but then there's also like but it's no different from like boxers when they punch they exhale mm-hmm. they tighten up their abs and they exhale when they punch mm-hmm. same thing in martial arts only we verbalize like it flowing. only we verbalize it mm-hmm. so uh, through like kiai um and kendo i um, feel like i've always just been really open to other languages like mm-hmm. even when i was a kid i was watching like spanish dramas like yeah and I would literally just, like, in uh, eighth grade during art, whenever we were finished with projects, me and this other girl would literally just watch soap operas in <laughs> Spanish. Like, we would watch, like, uh, telenovelas. Right, yeah, We would yeah. just watch them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we wouldn't even put subtitles on. Mm-hmm. And we were both, like, pretty... She was a level higher than me, so she could right. understand more. But I understand... It was, like, a good way to practice my skills because they yeah, used, yeah. used pretty basic Spanish, but it was speaking really quickly. Because, like, most TV shows use pretty, like, simple yeah, yeah. words because it's, like, for everyone. Right. That and the, uh, telenovelas are wild. <laughs> like we should watch one one of these days. They're fun. so funny. Yeah. Like this one girl, um, her like one... esposo was like cheating on her, and mm. then she ran over him with a car. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> uh, well, on we the have ducks been interrupted have by the ducks. <laughs> yes, telenovelas but, uh, are awesome. I recommend them for everyone. But like na- I like wa- I I've watched like K like, dramas. I don't know if it's considered like a telenovela, but I saw. Because my Spanish one teacher recommended a show called Go on Netflix mm-hmm. that's it takes place in Spain. Right. Like it, it, it is sort of soap opera-esque, but it's really kind of a fun show. And like, I'm not going to lie, it was enjoyable. Right. Even though it was very like, it's even though it was very like sort of soap opera-esque, I thought it was still enjoyable. And it's a musical show. Yeah. So I get to hear music in Spanish, which helps me learn that way. And then also I get to yes, hear them music. speaking it. I love like um, Alvaro Soler. Like mm. I think that's how, I think that's his name. I can't remember it very well, but I love his music. Mm. Like he's saying Sophia, mm-hmm. or, yeah, which is the first one I heard, and I heard it when I was in Spanish A. Yeah, and then I like all of his music now, like mm. Bonita and um, Histérico. <laughs> Good song. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna a quick pause break and, and come we'll be, we'll be back. Come back. Yes, we're back. We are back um, resuming our podcast. We can go talk about whatever we want. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So I've been exposed to a lot of languages Mm -hmm. and i've always just been curious about like i want to learn like a lot of languages right like i plan on like minoring in either like spanish or japanese not just because i'm a weeb (laughs) i just think like i mean like lots of like it's really applicable in the real world like lots of like if you have the same qualifications as somebody else except you also are bilingual you're more likely you're more likely to get the job like you won't always 100 percent of the time but there are lots of companies who really value that yeah, um, I understand, like, I know that Japan is a bit xenophobic. Like, not, probably not as bad as America is. No, But uh, not. the no. reason, I just think Japan's a very beautiful place. Like, I'm mm. not saying there is no, there is no factor to the fact <laughs> that I love Japan because I like anime. Right. But, like, it's not, like, they don't go hand in hand. I don't like Japan, because I understand yeah. that anime is not Japan. Yeah. It yeah, is yeah. a small part. It mm. is, like, the Harajuku district <laughs> of Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm sure there's, like... I know there's more to Japan than anime. Right, yeah. Um, that's definitely what sparked my interest as, like, a child. I mean, hey, there's also kendo. Yes. And legit, like, we know, I know, like, contacts. Like, I have um, one of the guys who does kendo. He doesn't do it in the southeast because he, like, right. travels a lot. But he actually, I can't remember exactly what he does, but he works at the U.S. Embassy in Japan. And I believe he does some work with, like, criminal profiling. Really? In Japan. 
And so because of that, he works with, you know, police stations often because he does yeah. criminal profiling. And in Japan, police stations have kendo dojos. Right. And they have... That's kind of cool. And they're literally police champions. Because they don't have guns. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And they're literally police championships. And, uh, like, they don't just carry, like, shinai around with them. They don't carry the bamboo sticks that we use for kendo around right. with them. But they, like, use batons and things. And, um... But anyway, so... And it's it's not like they actually use kendo to, like, beat people up. Because kendo is a sport. Yeah. But they still... But they um, learn it for, like, technique but they, purposes. Yeah, they can learn it for some technique purposes. And also, um... Like, it's just fun. Like, it's a fun, like, sport. leisurely sport yeah. to get them together and... But anyway, so because he does criminal profiling and he also practices kendo, he's done like practices with the police in right. like, Tokyo and I think Kyoto as well. Um, and so he said that it, like if me and like my dad, because my dad also does kendo with me, he was like, if you guys ever wanted to go to Japan, I could see about getting you hooked up with the police really? academy. And so I was like. I don't That's know. so cool. That's like a like, very good like backup if your like, life goes I don't south. Know. Well, I mean, you couldn't uh, like you couldn't. Um, like, I don't think they pay you anymore for doing the Kendo stuff. Yeah. But, like, as I said, like, that would be fun. Yeah, I mean, I like... I would be afraid of it, honestly, because, like, there are some, like... There are some myths about, like, that are probably true. Like, legends of just, like, how difficult it is. Right. Because literally, it's, like... Because the police literally have their own championships. Where, like, all the police Yeah, stations, I imagine they do that, because, like, the, most, like, and, like American only, police, You can like... only do it if you're a member of a dojo that practices as part of a police station. Yeah. And if, like, even if you're a guest to that police station, you can't practice. You have to be a police officer who also trains kendo. I feel like have, people would um, respect American cops more if they learned martial arts instead of just shooting people. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't want to get too much into that. But like, when to use and not to use. Yeah, I honestly think like. Um, but yeah, so I just thought, I was like, part of me is like, that would be awesome to train with police officers in Japan. Yeah. Then another part of me be is like, scary. I would, I would die. That is like because they have some of like the most like. Not necessarily the best kendo, but, like, they have some of the most competitive kendo in the world. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, Japan originated, like, because Japan, basically, they invented kendo. Yeah. And so they've been pretty much the rulers of it for forever. Um, Korea's close. Like, right. usually at Worlds, usually at the World Taekwondo, or World Kendo Championships, usually Korea's first, or, sorry, Japan's first. Usually Japan's first, Korea's second. Uh, sometimes the U.S. is third. There, but there are a few other countries. But there was one year where the U.S. obliterated everybody, even Japan. Absolutely we've only thriving won, that year. <laughs> the U.S. team has only won Worlds once. And it was that year? We've won it once, and it was a few years ago. But we've won, I think we've only won it once, maybe twice. It I must only, have been a very triumphant so moment. It's, but like part of how we did it was we were like, we was our teams, our national kendo team started using like athletic training. Mm -hmm. that was similar to what like basketball players go through and runners go through oh, so was, they so were basically they were treating it like an athletic sport instead of and like so they were like no arts? you can't yeah and so they were like you can't because kendo is a sport and a martial art like it's yeah. both and the two coexist but um the u.s used to just view it as like a martial art yeah whereas japan views it as both equivalently they're like this is a sport and a martial art and we, which is probably why they do so well. Yeah, which is probably why they do so well. Um, but because, but we, uh, the U.S. for a while was just viewing it as a martial art, and we couldn't compete with Japan because Japan just it's under their understanding of the martial art and sports sides much is more than we are, yeah. much more than ours. But there was one year where they were like, okay, so what we're doing is not working, so we're going to do what we can do. In do America. they still do that, or do they like? They still do that, but they're not. They haven't been as successful. Yeah. Because Korea and Japan were like, oh, I see what you're doing like, there. We see. Well, and let's, we're going to do that. Doing it, so that's <laughs> yeah. like, hmm, so you're making your, uh, so, hmm, because like legit, I know. We're making athletes out yeah, of our I artists. I know people yeah. who, I know, I know two guys actually who tried out for the men's uh, U.S. team. Did they make it? Uh, one of them made it and one of them's that's an alternate. That's cool. One of them made it and one of them's an alternate. And they're both really cool guys and they're both insanely good. Right. Um, but like, it's intense. Like they basically... I can't. I think it's called a Murph. I don't know exactly what a Murph is, but uh, I know that it's like on the training day, on the tryouts day, they had to run. Um, they had to run a mile, do a whole bunch of pull-ups, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of sit-ups, like pull-ups, not I just push-ups. Pull-ups. Pull they had to do a whole bunch of pull-ups, a whole bunch of sit-ups, run a mile, and they had to do several rounds of that. I would vomit. <laughs> so it was like, I think it was like a hundred or two hundred uh, sit-ups. 100 or 200 pull-ups, then a mile, then over again. And you had to be able to do it for the tryout. 
right? Because like that's they're like that's the athletic standard we're setting. They're like, no, you have to be, you can't just be good at kendo. You have to athletically be able to compete as well. How's that? And there was this one woman who I've also practiced with. Like I've I've actually had the honor because there's this one kid who does kendo with me who's like in his twenties. Right. And two of the guys who got onto the men's team, or one one who's an alternate and one who made it on, mm-hmm. they're both in their late twenties. And right. so since they all sort of like grew up relatively together, they're like friends. And so because of that, there was one time where the guy who at my dojo was like, hey, you want to come down and practice with us? And they were like, sure. And then he invited me and my dad to go practice with them. And that was really fun because we had like a private practice like early in the morning. That's so cool. And then this other woman came and she, she was in the Air Force. Oh my God. Before... She did kendo? Before she, or I think she did kendo, but then she stopped because she was in the Air Force. I don't know what she's doing now as her profession. Yeah. But because of it, like, apparently, like, she had no issue with the, with the training. Like, physically, Army she training, had, I can't even imagine Army training how hard is, it is. But, like, she, apparently she had, like, she... Even the like, stuff the JROTC because, but, like, kids even, do like, is wild. As I said, like, the Murph stuff that they had to do, that was the warm-up. Then they had to do Subari, which is basically, like, swings just with the Shanai, which only a few of them isn't very much because it's just a bamboo sword. Right. But if you're doing hundreds of those, your arms get worn out after a long while. Yes, your I can move the mic closer it's to okay. you. I think it still heard me because I spoke up a little bit. Okay. But I, I stood up there for a minute. But like doing hundreds of those, your arms start to wear out. I can imagine. So it's like, I mean, like they writing with Murph, a pencil too long they did makes the Murph, my arms hurt. Then they did Subidi. Then they put all of the armor on and actually started practicing. And the actual kendo trial. I would die. And I would actually die, like yeah, pass and away. And apparently this woman was like... She, and she's pretty young too and she's I think to the, she's the captain of the women's team mm-hmm. I might be wrong but like she like apparently she had no issue with it like she looked like she was barely breaking a sweat after the Murph and like wow. she she started to look exhausted but but like the guy that I know because he actually went to watch one of the tryouts because um, he wanted to he wanted to try out but he had uh, like an injury that prevented him from doing it in the time frame but um but like he watched the tryout and like apparently like you could tell she was tired but her kendo didn't get worse. Like a lot right. of times when people get exhausted, their their Ken- skills yeah, drop. Yeah, obviously because you're tired. You could tell she was tired and her energy wasn't quite up. But according to him, her skill never dropped. Skill level stayed the same, even though Wild. energy sort of dropped. And I was like, that is what I strive to be That's in talent. Kendo, Is no matter how exhausted I am, I want my skills to be just as good as if I had full energy. Yeah, I mean, but like, that was really neat. I mean, they treated me nicely because like I'm only like 14 or 15. Yeah. But at the same time, they gave me like really good advice that was useful. Yeah, I obviously, like, like, I obviously don't want, I don't know if I want to live in Japan, because mm. I've never been there. I haven't, like, because, like, as I said, I've, I've been, done as much research. I've been research. to a few countries on this hemisphere, because yeah. technically I've been to Canada, only the Niagara Falls side. Yeah, <laughs> I've only really been to the <laughs> but, Caribbean. Um, and I've been and to, I went, I've been to Mexico, but that was when I was, like, a baby. Like, right. I was barely a year old when I went to Mexico, so I don't remember whole, it, but I've still, I can still say that I've been there. Yeah. Uh, and then I went technically, to. your body has been there. Yeah, 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 my body has been there. Um. And then Colombia and Peru, which were the yeah. same vacation. Uh, fun fact, originally we were just going to go to Peru, but there were like some terrible storms and, uh, in the night, and so we had to... Move? Uh, like, well, so we had to... We were in Colombia about to pick up another flight to head to Peru. Hmm. The flight got canceled because of the weather. So you stayed in Colombia? So we stayed in Colombia, and my dad really liked it in Colombia, so we just spent, I think, a week there, maybe a week and a half there. Mm-hmm. Instead of just going back, instead of just getting back on and going, to I want to travel more. Yeah, instead of just getting back on and going to Peru the next day, we spent like a week and a half there and just altered some of our original plans. Yeah, and also, apparently, like just to give you, just to give every listener an example of the type of human being I am, I like to think that I'm the same human being now, but legit. We walked up Machu Picchu, which, if you know, is like mm-hmm. all the Incan temples that are high up in the mountains. Yeah, really high up, and they've got so many stairs. Obviously, which I mean, I was five, so I had no issue. My energy was, I was literally running up the yeah. stairs. Meow. And my dad, and we didn't, we, one of my dad's, uh, I don't think it was a coworker of his, but it was a friend of his at the time. Mm-hmm. He went on the vacation with us mm-hmm. because um, some of his family is from Peru and he, sp- and he spoke Spanish. And I was like, yeah, I'll go with you guys. That'll be fun. And he was like, I haven't seen my family in a while, so we can go. But anyway, so like both of them, my dad and his friend were far down the mountain. And I was like, Where'd they go? Where'd they go? You guys are moving so slowly. <laughs> so then I like ran back down. I was like, fine, I'll walk with you. But then as soon as I got to the top, the very top of like one of the, uh, one of the temples. <laughs> no, I wasn't gassed. In fact, I ran up I ran up to the edge, literally. And there's no railings. There's no railings. 
because railings would destroy the uh, the cultural integrity or the structural integrity of it and sort of like the I'm culture. So because, scared. What? Because those are those things are considered pieces of art. At five, I didn't care. I don't even think I realized that I could have died if I fell off. I literally just ran up to the edge, peered over. And I, <laughs> no, I'm not oh even my lying. God. I ran up to the edge, peered over. And it literally was like a cliff. Is it was like a temple here? You are fearless. Temple edge here. All I could see was haze and some trees sticking out of the haze. And of course, I could see like just on this side, like I could see that there was mountain below it. Like I could see temple was below me. Then there was mountain below the temple, and then there was just haze and a few tree branches sticking out of it. And I was like, "Huh, cool." Dope. Looks kind of like a slide, but I don't know that I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Legit. a slide. It did, though, because the mountain was curved. The forbidden slip and slide. <laughs> <laughs> the mountain was curved very nicely, so I was like, probably shouldn't, because I don't think that anybody else would follow me, but that looks like a slide. That'd be kind of fun. And yeah. as I said, obviously I didn't. You would die. I didn't, I didn't die. I'm standing here today. You're still like, here recording this yeah, episode. Yeah, I'm still here recording this episode, but this five-year-old This is not Chasby's ghost. <laughs> yeah, but five-year-old me was like, that curvy mountain looks like a slide. <laughs> Oh my god. And I wonder what's at the bottom of that fog. <laughs> death. Death Probably awaits death. you. <laughs> but and, and my dad says that that's like the closest he's ever gotten to like actually legitimately worrying about my health or safety. Yeah, because you ran to the because edge of a Because I literally ran cliff. to the edge of a cliff. And he, he, he says that like legitimately had I tripped or something, I probably would have fallen off. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, because I... was a very I, cautious, cautious child. I had, and of course, because I, I think I just didn't realize like how perilous it could have been. Yeah. Like I literally just ran up and was like... That mountain is curvy and it looks like Very a slide. Steep. I wonder what's at the end of that haze. That would be kind of fun, but I probably boring. shouldn't. Turn because, it around. But I, I wasn't like boring, but I was like, I probably shouldn't because nobody else is going to come with me. Because uh, I was like, I don't want to leave my dad and then have to hike all the way up back up oh this my mountain God. again. <laughs> you but didn't, see, I thought so innocently about you it. Like didn't I, I didn't accidentally commit die. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that I could have like accidentally died. I was more of just like a. I don't want to climb all the way back up this mountain to get back to you. You wouldn't dad. have had to worry about it if you I, jumped off that cliff. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, so, but like, as I said, and my dad was like, I tried to stop you, but like, you just had so much energy. You were prepared. He, he was, he was exhausted from having to walk up literally like thousands and thousands of stairs mm-hmm. to get to the top. And I was like, I'm good. Let's do this. And before he could get up there, I just ran to the edge and was like, ooh. ooh trees. <laughs> trees. Fog. Curvy mountain that looks like a slide. <laughs> yes. I wonder what's at the bottom. <laughs> yes. But, uh, so... Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I want to live in Japan. I think mm-hmm. that's something I'd have to test out. But I definitely yeah. want to either study abroad there. That would be or, really cool. Because yeah. like, it's definitely my backup to work there. Because like I said, I want to mm-hmm. minor in Japanese, and I'm mm-hmm. either gonna major or like double minor in psychology. Mm-hmm. It's just a plan. Yeah. I just, I that's one of the things that I know I'm doing in the future. Yeah. Whether I'm majoring or minoring in right. it is um, up for debate. But I want like my mm-hmm. backup job plan right. to be like be like a psychologist in japan that because be the suicide rate is so high there mm. and i just honestly if i can like help because over there like just like culturally they're like set up not to like bother people right so yeah, they don't yeah. normally talk about their problems so i feel like mm. i i want to like go there and like help as many people as i can yeah that could be really cool it's and i know that if you speak even like a like a lick of japanese and english they'll be like here's your visa welcome to japan <laughs> <laughs> right right right. i think it uh yeah as i said i think for me like i would love to keep going with spanish like even yeah. though i would probably i just, love spanish it's, like it's i would love fun. i would love because i would love to vacation to more spanish-speaking countries yeah and also i'm definitely gonna um, hold on to it yeah and also not only that but like like even if i work in the u.s like because of how many like spanish-speaking immigrants there are yeah like any job that I have in the U.S. that involves working with other people, like that involves working, yeah, with the you general, will definitely get that, that job. Involves easier. working with the general community, mm-hmm. like I, I, that, I think that could be really beneficial. Um, and also, as I said, I just I would love to go back to Peru because I have nothing but positive memories. I just want to travel more. Um, <laughs> I will say though, a, a lot of people in my family consider me a monster because uh, my... I had guinea pig while I was in Peru. Oh, it's tasty. I'm not gonna lie. I'm so picky. It's I could tasty. never. That's the only reason really that I, I, I'm, like, questioning my want to travel, because I'm yep. such a picky eater. My sister's, like, not, like, I'm not, like, my an sister's American trying eater. Shame like, I me for it. to, like... Yeah, my sister's trying to shame me for it, and I'm like, no, it is good. Unfortunately, uh, it's made of meat. Sorry to steal a, Sokka's a, joke, but... Yeah. But, like, I mean, yeah, guinea pigs are cute, but they're also delicious. I'm not gonna lie. 
Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not a big fan of guinea pigs. I'm not that mad at you for it. <laughs> if you ate a lamb, a lot I'd of be, people are. I'd be, I'd be offended mm. if you ate a lamb because <laughs> I have a lamb stuffed animal and I love him very much. Yeah, but like as I said, like my sister's like try and shame me for it, and I'm like, I'm sorry. It is really good. <laughs> it is good. <laughs> it is good, and like um. Had calamari once. It's like the most calamari, exotic food. I've the, ever had. I think the most interesting thing I've had escargot, which is a snail. Snail. Yeah. That was no weird because stomach wise, I was like, "Oh, this is actually pretty tasty" because it's like buttery and creamy. Yeah, and yeah, because they add a lot of butter to it. Yeah, right? and it's like, but my brain was texture. like, but my brain was like, "Dude, this do you realize snail. you are eating a snail?" And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you." Uh, yeah, but I thought it was tasty. Yes. Um, so back to the point at hand, I've mm-hmm. been uh, like exposed to a lot of languages, mostly mm-hmm. just because of YouTubers. Yeah, like PewDiePie. Like mm-hmm. I, I got like right. a little bit of Swedish. Like mm-hmm. I got exposed. But not enough to learn the language at all. <laughs> I just would hear him cursing in Spanish. Or, right. In Spanish, yeah. In Spanish. In Swedish. <laughs> in Swedish, but, like, right. I would watch, like, J-vloggers, mm-hmm. even when I was, like, a little kid, before I, like, comprehended yeah. Japan yeah. is not being America. Like, right, I was like, right. wow, this is just another place. Must be. I wonder how far it is from Virginia. <laughs> right, right, I wonder right. if I can drive there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I was just watching J-vloggers on my <laughs> iPad, and I was right. like... They sound funny. <laughs> like, I didn't know what was going on. Right. I didn't, I, my brain, because I was still so young, I didn't really, like, comprehend it was another language. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, that English I don't sound... understand. Yeah, yeah. So I would, like, turn mm. on captioning, and I'd be like, mm. huh? <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, but, uh. Yes, so. But yeah, I feel I think, like, like, as I said, I think that I've been lucky with that, because I've been exposed to languages, and, like, I learned stuff about, like, that when I was very young, as I was like, okay. Spanish is a different language. This country has different cultures and different things like that. Yeah. Because I was, like, shown that very little, like, I think that that was, like, I've always been very open-minded to different cultures. And, I mean, I chose martial arts as, like, the thing I wanted to do with my life. Because, like, when I was little, apparently I was very good at tennis and also very good at baseball. Mm-hmm. But eventually I just Supposedly I, like, I have good hand-and-eye coordination, but, mm. but at like, life, <laughs> life has been proving that <laughs> statement wrong. Right, but, like, when I was little I was really into like as i said tennis and baseball but then i found martial arts and i was like no nah, this is, this is what i'm that. gonna chill with I'm just gonna do martial arts yes so i mean cool. i guess we can talk about like how we speak like oh yeah, i know yeah. we like touched on how i like used to talk like slightly british because i watched so many <laughs> british youtube i right. didn't even realize i was doing it. i was just like literally yeah that was just a word i said i was just like literally mm-hmm. and like apparently like um I forget what the word was, but I said it all the time, and people mm-hmm. didn't know what I meant by it. Like it was, it was British slang. Like I know way too much British slang. I know a lot too because I've seen lots of British TV shows and I've read, I've read a lot of British books. Yeah. Like um, I know that lorry means like, like yep. not like some, not always semi trucks, but like delivery trucks and things, like big trucks. I think. Um, what is it? Um, and so like I lots of people are, little, little, are like, wait, what? A lot of Americans are like, wait, what's a lorry? And I'm like, oh. As a matter of it's fact, a truck. <laughs> this is a truck. Let me let's Google British slang and see how many I can recognize. Here we can let's see if there's like a quiz or something. British slang quiz. Yeah, let's see how much of it I know. I probably won't do well, but I will say I know. A, I, I think okay I'll do amount. okay because I watched. I literally watched an absurd. I watched more British YouTubers than I did American. Like mm. I watched like non-American. I've watched uh, every uh, single. A corker is someone who is. Uh, uh, I think it's. Mm, belligerent. I think it's belligerent. I believe so. Yep. Woohoo. Two. In London, you're on British time. How long's a four? Fourteen days. Yeah. Uh, two weeks. Okay. I was like, fourteen days isn't on there. Yeah. <laughs> and my brain didn't comprehend that two weeks is fourteen days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if somebody is taking the Mickey, what are they doing? I think it's taking blame for something they didn't do, but I might be wrong. I. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't See? know that one. Um, to be spawny in England is to be up to no good. Up to no good. Yeah, I honestly don't know. I mean, click it. See. Yep. Yay. Um, I didn't know that one, but I did. Richard the Third was so interesting that William Shakespeare wrote a play on him. Today, a Richard the Third can be expre- ex- expressed with which emotion? I'm gonna say the crown one. But I want to say the ghost. You can do that. Oh, let's put the crown. Was it? Are they all correct? Oh, it doesn't tell us which is correct. Yet. Oh, it doesn't okay. tell us which is correct. Well, so we'll see at the end. Let's go with the crown, yeah. Um, uh, unlike a knob, a, a knob. A, like a doorknob, a knob describes someone who's dumb. I think it's dumb. stupid. Yeah, my mom uses that. Mm. 
she calls me a knob all the time. <laughs> like, actually. She's like, what a knob. Continue the quiz. I didn't know that was British <clears throat> slang. I just thought that was just another word for stupid. Mm. There's more. Although the French are better known for their cheese, British use this phrase for bad luck. I think it's... Out of cheddar? Uh, uh, or hard know. cheese? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's breed and mall. I don't know. It's a French Fun word. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Makes Bang sense. to rights can be translated to American English as... I believe that's plead the fifth, but I might be wrong. But the Fifth Amendment doesn't exist in Britain. No, but it's the exact. It's the same thing. Oh, okay. Is they say bang to rights as I don't want to say this because I might incriminate myself. Okay. Whereas we have an actual amendment. In England, so, a like, brass not- monkey is neither a metal nor a primate. What does this phrase mean? Uh, I think irrational. it's irrational. Yeah. If Mum's English breakfast is scrummy, that means it's disgusting. I believe. No, maybe it's scrumptious. Yeah, that's yeah, what I delicious. that's what I was thinking. Yeah, uh, which is not a word for policeman. Fuzz, I know we use. Maisie, call, Maisie calls them the fuzz. I gotta uh, uh, roll that out. Uh, my bad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Fifty-five minutes. Bear. I believe they're not called Old Bill, but I don't know honestly. I know. I really don't. Let's just go with. Old. I mean, Bill. we'll find out at the end. So it'll be interesting. A crumpet is typically a treat to eat with tea, but a person if a person is a crumpet, they are I rude. think it's... I, you might be right. I don't know. I was thinking polite, but, I mean, we'll see. As I said, I don't know how much of this I actually know and how much of this I just think I know. Let's see what we got. Uh, Hold tight. We're going to find out what we got on this British slang quiz. Probably didn't do very well. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got none <laughs> incorrect! correct! <laughs> That can't be right. We had to get one of those. That's, we had that to can't get one be of those. true. Statistically, we had to get one of those. Yeah, we could literally have been guessing. I think maybe this quiz is just I think this quiz, because I know knob means stupid. Let's Google it. What does n- knob mean in British slang? Slough. <laughs> slang. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Fun! A wealthy or influential person. Huh. <clears throat> the word "not" means stupid, doesn't it? A lack of... No, no. Head mind. sense? Head sense. Uh, I don't know. But what does knob mean? Well, apparently we're slang? much worse at this than we thought. Yeah, oh my god. Or this quiz is just messing with us, or both. We know probably... A no wealthier, more. influential person. Hmm. I always thought it just meant stupid. Is that just me? Maybe it's like trying to... Maybe they're all trick questions, or we are literally just terrible at this. We might just be terrible at this. <laughs> I honestly don't know I wonder if there's, like, that. an English slang... I wonder how we would do an English slang. Uh, Urban Dictionary. <laughs> no, like, English slang quiz. Because I know I'm pretty behind on slang. Uh, you would probably have to do American slang. Oh, oopsies. American slang. Sure. Let's try these yeah. three. Okay, let's do this one first. See what it's about. Okay. Buck mean a dollar. Like a buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A buck is a dollar. I didn't know that was slang. Is yeah, that but really old, slang? It is slang, but it's an old slang. Like, it's been around for forever. Uh, finish the phrase. Do you mean hit, just hit the books? Uh, hit the, yeah, hit the books. Because to sleep is hit the hay, hay or hit yeah. the sack. Yep. Hit the ground is like hit the ground running. Yeah. Um, if somebody says, I ace the test, what does ace mean? Passed. Passed. Usually it's used meaning, like, do, literally pa- passed it without missing one, but... Wait, do people not, like, use these outside of America? Like, do British people not know this? I don't know. That's crazy. That's, wanna... That is weird to think about, because they probably think that, like, oh... They're like, they're, what does they're probably like, East mean? Yeah, they're probably like, oh, it's an English-speaking country. They probably have the same, uh... Huh. These words Which one mean? of these phrases is used as someone who's lazy? Couch potato. Couch potato. <laughs> do people not know that? <laughs> probably. I mean, there are probably people, like, as I said, it, it is very specific slang that, like, a lot of people don't even realize is slang. If you wanted someone to call you, you'd ask them to give you what? A uh, ring. A ring. Give us a ring, as in phone ring. Yeah. Does hip mean cool? Cool. That's an old slang. That is That's what, old like, slang. old people use. My Hold grandma's horses. fresh, though. Hold your horses. Yeah, it's to finish a phrase that uh, means, wait a like minute. Going too fast, yeah. If somebody says, I'm all ears, what do they mean? They're hearing you. Yeah, they're listening. Duh. That's duh. You can figure that, that one, one out. Yeah, that one probably. But it may just be sense, common sense to us. Yeah, I'm sure but it's probably common sense. Like they could probably figure out what it means. Which of these words or phrases can be used to describe people paying for their own meal? 
I don't. I don't know even this know one. this one. Dutch. Huh. If you go out to eat on a date, you might hear the word Dutch rather than one person footing the entire bill or splitting it. How? If you go Dutch, this means everyone is paying for what they bought. Uh, I actually didn't know that. I didn't know that one either. If you're about to eat tons American. of food, <laughs> with what American? With what animal would you complete the phrase? Dog out. I thought it was pig out. Oh. <laughs> There's a difference in our understanding <laughs> of slang. I've always said dog pig, out. Pig out. Yeah. What? I thought it was pig out. Oh my god. It's to eat a whole bunch of food. That's why they call people who eat a lot piggies. Oh my god. I mean, it's really mean. I've and said I don't, dog out. I don't like demeaning people to animals, but like, I mean, it's I know, just, like, calling somebody the, a pig for the, eating too yeah, much. Yeah, but that's just what the slang is. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that, but I thought it was dog out. Hmm. Huh. Weird. Maybe that's like a Canadian slang that I didn't know. Maybe. Uh, just I believe put it's. Put up a front mean. Act tough. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I could see that being a slang term. Yeah, yeah. Uh, finish finish the, phrase. the phrase that means to giving them the cold shoulder. Yeah, the cold shoulder is to ignore. I them. feel like that's common because like American that's a relatively, TV. Yeah, I think that's probably really common because I feel like I that's passed been, by the skin of my teeth. Means barely, barely passed. passed. That's one that's definitely very slangy and wouldn't yes. make sense to anybody who didn't know. Which of the? I feel like those are more of um, what are they called? It's a. They're sort of like idioms. Figurative right? language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Idioms. Which of these words or phrases can be used to describe something Getting bothering someone? Skin. Yeah. If someone wants your signature, they might ask for your John, John Hancock. Hancock. Yeah. That's definitely That's something very nobody American. would get. Yeah, yeah, nobody else would get that. Because if you don't know who signed the Constitution know, very large, yeah, if you didn't know that one dude who just was like, "Oh, you want my signature?" I feel like some of younger Americans wouldn't know that. Yeah, like if you haven't like experienced. Real, well, yeah, like he, because uh, apparently the story goes that he didn't realize that so many people were signing it. And that's why I signed it so big. Oh, it's like when you thought, sign a birthday card, yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. realize like twenty he, other people yeah, yeah, are signing it. Yeah, he thought it. it was only like a few. He thought it was only like ten people. So we put his signature as if it were like a document that like he just had to sign. Yeah. But in fact, no, it was a list of signatures, not just him. <laughs> it and was maybe his a few other massive. He- his so massive. It was everybody signature. else's tiny, and his was huge. What does a piece of cake mean? Easy. Yeah, that's probably one that's. Very. That one doesn't make sense to me, and I'm yeah. American. Like that, I'm like, how how is cake easy? It's hard to bake. Finish the <laughs> phrase that means all day and night, around the clock. Yeah. Do people do people know that? I feel like that's Probably. common sense. Like all day would be like around the clock. You I don't the know, clock maybe. hands go all the way around. I honestly don't know. If someone needs cash, what does crash mean? To sleep at their house. I need to crash it means they need to sleep over. Yeah. I said cash. Oopsies. Cash. Which of these words or phrases can be used to describe a casual conversation? Uh, to kill time. Yeah. Uh, shoot, short, the bre- shoot the shoot breeze. breeze. I've never heard oh, of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have you? I've, I've never heard, heard of that it, used. but I didn't think of it. If someone wants to tell you to finish something, they might tell you to wrap, wrap it, it up. up. Which, that one seems I... rather logical to me. <laughs> what does jonesing mean? Uh, to want, want something. something. I'm really jonesing for something. Yeah. I've I don't know that. where that one comes from. Neither do I. That sounds very American. Yeah. Finish the phrase, describe something that doesn't happen often. Once in a blue moon. Yeah. I feel like that's a common phrase. Is that Amer- is that an American slang? I don't know. Again, Someone I don't know I'm most of these. going to hit the road. What are they doing? Uh, leaving. Yeah. Uh, or hits, telling somebody to hit the road. Yeah. Is to leave. Yeah. Which of these words or phrases can be used to describe someone sitting in the front passenger seat of the car? Right. Shining shotgun. shotgun. That's definitely an American phrase. Yeah. I don't think anyone else would like say, I, I don't call know. shotgun. Yeah, I don't know the history of that one either. Like, did somebody literally just like, <laughs> like have I think a shotgun really, like, and like, I, I like, am in the passenger seat. Nobody else can have it. It's my passenger seat. <laughs> I think that's just where most people shoot from, though. Like, if you're hunting, you will like get on oh, the passenger yeah, yeah. side and hunt from the... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't point, know, though. I, I, that's what, just what I assume, because I, I watch a lot of North Woods <laughs> Law. <laughs> I just said, I honestly have no idea. I've never actually gone hunting. I've Any of the history behind these, I just know. I've heard them used enough that I recognize them. If you refuse to answer a question, you might say what? Uh, plead, the fifth. plead the fifth. Yeah, that's uh, uh, in at risk of incriminating myself. But with, yeah. the, with answering this, I will not I do answer. that. I do that when we play like Jeopardy in class too, though. I'll mm-hmm. be like, mm. plead the fifth. Plead the fifth. <laughs> I'll also I say, can know. I call a friend? <laughs> I've done that before. My math teacher literally called on me to answer a question I was on the board, and I was like, can I phone a friend? She <laughs> was like, no. <laughs> Screw up mean. Make a mistake. Make a mistake. Yeah. I thought that's it's a common phrase, isn't it? So it means something was really good food-wise. That, that hit, hit the spot. Point. Yeah. It doesn't always have to be food, though. All right, there are a lot of questions. Yeah, maybe we, might we should need give to up stop. now. Yeah, yeah. We, we're obviously getting it, most of it, them. It tells us question by question whether we answered it right or not. So. Yeah. 
so I think that's all, all, all we have for today. We are yeah. over our hour mark. Definitely. Alrighty. Um, it's been fun. But, uh, Subscribe, ring the bell, and we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. And ciao. Bye-bye. <laughs>